Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to this afternoon session. I feel a little redundant repeating this because these ladies have made such a <laughs> nice slide, but you're in a session to talk about time and patience, which is an educational game today presenting. We have Jen Deutsch, who is the co-curricular programs manager. We also have Wendy Mahan, who is a senior instructional designer and HH Dev. And the icon, if you will, that's <laughs> in the corner there is Kevin Lynch. I don't know if he will be expanded or not at all during this, but he's going to live in the corner of the presentation for a little bit. I don't want to expand. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, lady. So hi, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. Um, this is our presentation. It's called Time and Patience and Persistence creating an engaging simulation for online MHA students. So this afternoon, Wendy, Kevin, and I will be walking through you through a gaming simulation that we created and debuted last summer for the first cohort going through the online Master of Health Administration program. Great. Um, so to give you a bit of background, uh, the MHA program at Penn State has been in existence for a little over 25 years, and the online version started about a year and a half ago in the fall of 2012. So our uh, program takes about 28 months to complete. We have 17 courses and our students complete uh, 49 credits for the degree. So the, the entire coursework is uh, designed to be completed entirely online except for two face-to-face -face management intensives. So these face-to-face -face components, they're a requirement from our accrediting body. They occur for two weeks in semester three, which is a summer semester, and one week in semester seven, which is the last semester of the program. Um, so here's a picture of our first cohort. Uh, this is when they came to visit us last summer. It was taken on campus at President's House. Kevin's blocking them a little bit, but. <laughs> um, so the, stu the students in our first cohort, they're all working professionals and they're employed in some area of the healthcare industry. So we have clinical folks, physicians, nurses, dentists, we also have those that are in managerial positions in pharmaceutical companies, consulting firms, uh, long-term care communities, um, health insurance companies. We have those working for large health systems as well as those working for small rural community hospitals. So on average, uh, our students have about eight to 10 years of professional experience. Um, so in addition to them being diverse in professional setting, they're also really diverse in regard to age, race, and geographic location. So currently two of our students are working abroad. We have one working for the United Nations in Pakistan and one working in the UAE uh, in Dubai. So um, although they're diverse in a lot of ways, one of the things they do have in common is that they're all very busy. Most of them, in addition to their professional responsibilities, have families and many of them have children in the grades K through 12. So I'm going to try to use this laser pointer. Uh, 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 it like goes away. It goes away. But here's a snapshot of a few of our students. That's Meredith, Min, Imran, Jamarish, and another picture of Kevin, who's up there, uh, who we'll be hearing from in just a little bit. So we created the simulation for one of the courses in our program called Healthcare Operations Management. The course is taught by Dr. Jonathan Clark. He's an assistant professor in health policy and administration, and he's also the executive director of the residential version of the MHA program. So Dr. Clark uh, focuses his course into two sections, one um, that talks about process management and improvement, and the other that more broadly focuses on the design of operating systems as a whole. So the simulation was really created for the first section of the course to help our students with concepts such as process analysis, queuing theory, the psychology of waiting, and staffing decisions. So we wanted a creative way to push our students to think critically about real world operations management scenarios, and this tool really helped us do that. So the idea was to create a game that was based in a healthcare setting. So in this case, we used a walk-in physician clinic. And we wanted there, them, there to be variables that the students can manipulate. So the amount of time it took for a patient to be seen, 
the number of staffing personnel that were on hand to see patients, uh, the conditions of the waiting room. So was there a view, with a window with a view? Was there a TV and uh, an aquarium? Something to distract patients while they were waiting. Was there coffee and tea, a beverage service? Something to make their wait more pleasant. So we wanted them to be able to manipulate these types of variables in order to optimize operations. So reduce bottlenecks, um, increase the patient satisfaction scores, and maximize profits. So in order to do this, we, uh, we partnered with the Educational Gaming Commons to create the simulation. The simulation itself took about seven months to complete. We started in December of 2012, and the game went live in our course in June of 2013. So I'm going to pass it off to Wendy now. She's going to talk to you a little bit more about our partnership with EGC, as well as give you a demonstration of our final product. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that without the Educational Gaming Commons, we couldn't have done this. Um, Chris Stubbs, the manager, is back there. Um, if you have any technical questions, I will refer you to him. Um, at the time we decided to do this, uh, we were aware of the Educational Gaming Commons, and as luck would have it, they were looking for, for projects, and they had already done a simulation with the economics department, so they had some experience on them. They were a no-cost recovery unit, which was great for us because we had just thought of this at the last minute. Um, when Jonathan and I were originally thinking about the course, we thought we'd have the uh, students like go into an actual waiting room or observe an actual waiting room and then we realized that how would they see the behind the scenes type of things so then we said well let's do a simulation and I was like well educational gaming commons might be able to help us and they they did more than that they really made our, our vision come true and we were very grateful for their help um, whoopsies I'm going the wrong way here we go our concerns when we were doing this simulation keeping it simple it was a very rigorous program, and these, as, as Jen mentioned, these people are working professionals with families. They're juggling a lot of things. So we didn't want a big, complicated game that had a high learning curve that would take up all their time. We didn't want it to distract from the actual learning. Uh, keeping it professional, we had conversations. We originally were calling it a game, and we're like, no, let's, let's call it simulation because it sounds more professional. And we didn't know what their perceptions were going to be when we asked them to play the game because they are not traditional students. They are non-traditional students and, and, and professionals. Uh, avoiding feeling isolated. Again, this is, an, an online pro this is an online program. So we're giving them a game, we're asking them to learn the game, and then we're asking them to play this game what good is it unless they're able to share it with one another, their strategies, their feelings about it, you know, what they've discovered. And then finally, managing um, expectations of the team in terms of deadlines, in terms of expectations. Because, I mean, as you can imagine, we had a ton of ideas, and, but we had a very short time to get it together. So we had to watch that very carefully. So what we finally did, the final product is based on a scenario. The students are told that they are taking over a clinic, a walk-in clinic that's in trouble financially, and they are to make it better. We began with a weekly report, and we divided the shifts into, it's, they have to look at the hospital in terms of Monday through Friday, and on each day there's two shifts that they have to look at. So there's a total of 40 goals that they have to meet, 10 shifts, four goals of profit, throughput time, satisfaction, and walkout. So 40 goals for the game, and their options, as Jen mentioned, they can hire fire staff, they can um, purchase amenities as far as a fish tank or a TV or paint the colors of the waiting room, and they also um, can adjust the schedule of, of all the different staff, the doctors, the nurses, and the uh, receptionists and billing. So now I'm just going to go through um, some screen captures because I'm a little bit worried about showing the simulation with Skype and everything. I think we're going to freeze. So we decided to go the safe route and show screen captures. This is the, um, the opening of the game and what it does. It tells them about the scenario, about the, con the, the condition the, uh, simul the outpatient clinic is in. And as you can see, Chris and Zach made it dreary and scary <laughs> because they're walking into this horrible situation. And down there are the icons for the full four goals profit, throughput time, satisfaction, and patient walkouts. And this is the weekly report. This is how they start. And all this shows them is revenue, expenses, and profit. And they have the option to hire um, 
an analyst to get more information, but, but it's up to them how they want to handle it. They can go through this information and use only this information, or they can hire the analyst for more information. Again, another thing that we were looking at with this game is we realized that some people are very quantitative and they like numbers and other people are very visual. So we wanted to give them the option of either just playing with data or looking at, this, at the clinic. So from here, they can, after looking at this weekly report, they can go to make additional changes and work with the numbers or they can actually view the simulation by clicking on one of the, bu the buttons on the bottom. And if they click on the button on the bottom, this is what the simulation looks like. And as you can see, it's an outpatient clinic, and the people are actually walking all through the clinic. So you see, they, they're coming into the clinic, they're checking at the receptionist area, they're going into the waiting room, and then they, they go into the exam room. So in addition to the patients, we have the um, nurses and doctors and the, and the clerical staff running around there as well. And um, as you can see, right here, back to the mic, <laughs> the red exclamation point is when they get angry and they walk out. Um, the green dollar sign appears when they make it all the way through the clinic and pay for the services. So that's how, those, how they can keep track of them. And then on, on the side are the four different goals. So as, as they watch the uh, simulation, they, see, they can see bottlenecks, they can see where the patients are backing up, they can see where the staff are, um, they can see what, what's going on in terms of the numbers, and um, they can get a, get a nice view of all of this. After they go through watching the shift, they get a summary where they can look at either a summary of the shift, they can go back to the weekly report, they can adjust the schedule, and this is nicely done. So as you can see, they have the doctors and the nurses and the, the billing and the reception, and they can see who's on and who's off. They can, you know, take somebody off and put somebody back on. They can look at just view the shift only. So we have a lot of options for them. And here, I, I'm, I'm just showing you the staff. And when they go into the staff, we, we have the doctors, and you can see how much you know, they're paid. You can fire them. You can look at their resume. You can find out more about the um, qualifications. And here's the options. And this is, this is just a sampling of things they could do. Paint, paint the waiting room blue, purple, um, add a TV, whether it's small or large, a fish tank, artwork, plants. I mean, they, they could do whatever they wanted here. And that would impact patient satisfaction. That would impact throughput time. As far as providing support for the students, as you can see, there are a lot of numbers and a lot of screens. So we were worried about how we were going to convey all this information. It's one thing for me to sit here and talk to you and talk you through the screens, but these people are online. So what were we going to do to support them? We did three things. First, we, um, Chris actually did the tutorials where he, he talked through the different screens and made videos for them, and we uh, embedded them right in the course so that students, as they were making their way through the course, they, they came across this page and could view the different videos. We also did screen captures. Um, Chris helped with the screen captures, and I wrote out instructions. So we have numbers on them, and we you know, explained in very detail what, what the different features were. And then finally, Yammer. We've been using Yammer in the program from the very start. And I'm not sure, is everybody familiar with Yammer? I think so. Um, we decided to keep going with our Yammer idea and allow them to discuss the game on Yammer. And what we thought was, well, let me go here. For the first week, we wanted them to feel relaxed and get comfortable with the game. So we're like, don't worry about reaching any of the goals, just explore the game. Um, if you have any questions, go on Yammer and ask the questions. And what we did is we had Chris and Zach participate in the discussion forum, and as well as the instructor. So the, the students could play, explore, talk to them, ask them questions. It was a real relaxed environment. And then during the second week, we put them into groups, and we asked them to share their strategies and try to achieve the, the different goals for all the different shifts. And then the final, and just to point out the final, they were assessed based on a reflection. They weren't assessed on whether they won the game or if they scored the highest or anything like that. We simply just asked them to write a reflection at the end. Now we're ready for Kevin. All right. Well, thank you so much. First, I'd like to thank Jen and uh, Wendy for inviting me to participate. Uh, this is sensational. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to take the next 10 or 15 minutes or so to share with you 
from the student's perspective, utilizing the time and patient simulation uh, during its inaugural uh, rollout in the summer of 2013. Uh, and really, I can't talk enough uh, about the game without first acknowledging the sensational job that you know Jonathan, uh, Clark, Wendy, Chris, and Zach did in developing it uh, for our uh, our cohort and for the health operations management course. Uh, so far, the benefit that we have gained from uh, honing our intuitive and analytical skills uh, is really immeasurable. So I'm going to discuss a little bit about the support from the developers uh, from my perspective and, and many of my cohorts who I've reached out to in preparation for this, as well as uh, Yammer discussions that we had within our own little peer groups. So support from the developers was really uh, above reproach. Um, as you may suspect, a cohort of seasoned professionals can quickly develop an extensive list of questions. Uh, however, that was not the case, uh, to the best of my, my knowledge, with this simulation. Uh, the tutorials, Chris, were just uh, sensational, well-organized, and the screenshots were very comprehensive and really negated much of the need for Yammer discussions. Um, however, when we did reach out to the team, they were quick to support and answer any questions that we had, so we were thrilled with that. Um, many members of this cohort played the simulation very strategically. Uh, and a lot of this discussion will be around how I played it. Uh, I was very strategic in nature of the, uh, with regard to this. Uh, the leaderboard would change several times a day, and Yammer discussions became very active and charged with friendly competition. So the next couple of slides that I'm going to show you, slides uh, 24 and 5, are excerpts from our Yammer post earlier in the week. So the next slide, please, Dan. So this is um, a discussion that was held early in the week between three students. I'm going to give you a moment to read this, and this was uh, actual dialogue. So while many of us shared friendly advice on meeting the goals, much like uh, healthcare delivery is where you are competing for a finite population of uh, patients, uh, we did not share all of our secrets. Uh, we, we did share some of the things that we were doing to increase profitability or increase patient satisfaction, but I was not willing to develop my, uh, my cohorts, uh, my team members, to the point where they would beat me in the competition. So um, I will share that a member currently of, of my group in this particular cohort, number two in this scenario, uh, in this exchange rather, is currently operationalizing the skills that she developed utilizing this simulation to implement changes in an organization that just brought her in for change management. Uh, there is no doubt that she'll be successful and of course she will poise that organization for continued growth. Thanks, Jen. So this slide, uh, this slide revolves around a lot of uh, the analysts that Wendy had spoke of earlier. I found the analyst to be uh, absolutely imperative to being su successful in meeting all 40 goals. I actually don't believe it can be done successfully without the analyst. Um, just my perspective. Although uh, we did discuss within the cohort viewing this person as a consultant uh, and not necessarily as an FTE that would be fired uh, at the end of this, but more of uh, somebody that came in specifically for this uh, throughput evaluation. So keeping this person on the payroll we found was unnecessary. Uh, it, an unnecessary expenditure um, and only decreased our profitability. However, you can see student number four um, had a personal conflict in firing this person. Uh, and we view this through back, uh, back discussions that this was an opportunity to develop some managerial courage that uh, sometimes this is exactly what you need to make the organization profitable. Thanks, Jen. So the experience of playing the game. Uh, the, I, I want to address the design team concerns, uh, specifically keeping it simple because of the rigorous program that we were in and avoiding uh, the feeling of isolation among, among the members of the, the cohort. Um, keeping it simple. This simulation came at a time during this program when the cohort was feeling the full impact of an intense learning experience coupled with our demands of being uh, working professionals and um, family members, the head of households. Uh, it, is, it allowed us an opportunity to exhale and apply um, some of the knowledge that we had gained through the program and through our individual careers as well. So I found it almost therapeutic. I, I played this quite frequently. Um, it, it was very relaxing other than the music, and we'll get to that in a minute. So. Uh, Avoiding a feeling of isolation, I, I definitely want to talk about that for a moment. Uh, 
at no time, to the best of my knowledge, did any member of this cohort feel isolated. Because the leaderboard was there, it served to motivate and keep us all connected. Uh, it was a tool similar to the use of dashboards or HCAP scores that are used in the healthcare system, which allow us to measure our comparative success against our peers as well as the simulation objectives. So we found that uh, we were continually reaching out to each other. We're playing with that, um, that leaderboard to see where we are. Uh, I'm sure that some members of the cohort uh, felt uh, struggling at, at times, but uh, they did have their peers to reach out to. So the students' concerns. Uh, our primary concern was to achieve the stated objectives to the best of our ability. Uh, and those objectives, uh, Wendy had mentioned earlier, profit, throughput, time, satisfaction, walkouts. Uh, because of those four, it would not allow us to be myopic in our approach. We could not focus strictly on achieving profitability by reducing overhead and some of our expenses. And we could not focus primarily on patient satisfaction by overstaffing during critical uh, and high volume times because we had to hit all four uh, goals. So we found that the operate, what we found is that we had to achieve an operational equilibrium point by applying the course learning objectives uh, effectively. Which brings us to our next slide. So the application of our course learning objectives. Uh, earlier in the semester, we had been introduced to the psychology of waiting lines. Uh, I found this simulation the perfect opportunity to exercise the material that we had covered in the principles of waiting and the psychology of cues because these principles can be used to influence patient satisfaction scores. Things such as unoccupied time uh, feels longer than occupied time, pre-process time feels longer than in-process waits. Um, we needed to consider these factors when we started making decisions, our soft principle decisions and our staffing decisions. In fact, a, a great example uh, in this would be um, the planting of flowers. Benign as that may seem, what planting flower beds cost us $200, uh, $200 a week. Uh, it also improved patient traffic to the point where we were generating an additional $440 of revenue a week. So to me, that additional $240 in net revenue was worth the investment because it paid for 80% of my aquarium, which bumped up my, pa my patient satisfaction scores. This all happened because of the analyst that, that I hired and many of my, uh, my classmates hired. We had to have that information, know what it was going to do, and, and certainly it didn't come over uh, utilizing it uh, or using it just once or twice. This was continual over the two-week period. So um, I found that wait times were more tolerable when features such as magazines, the TV, the aquarium uh, were introduced, even to the point that I could remove half of the chairs in the waiting room and people were willing to stand because we had these soft features there. As to whether or not operations management is more intuitive or, or science, uh, there was not a, really a consensus among the cohort. It was more individualistic. Um, it seemed to, uh, I will share that at the top of the leaderboard, however, um, those at the top, it was heavily weighted toward those who did use a lot of data, and a lot of analytics, as well as personal intuition. Thank you, Jen. Okay, so takeaways. I have several takeaways uh, for you. So in today's healthcare environment, one of the biggest challenges that I have found is, uh, in, that faces senior leaders is how to respond to the external downward pressure on revenues while maintaining employee engagement and patient satisfaction. Uh, we were given an opportunity to develop our strategic thinking skills in an environment that would not negatively impact our stakeholders. Uh, I also feel that seeing the simulation process flow was very, very helpful in identifying the bottlenecks with staffing, wait times, and processes. My, my big takeaway is that this simulation reinforced that healthcare delivery is operationally and financially most successful when leaders acknowledge the intrinsic value that each member of the team, from the receptionist to the biller, brings to the overall patient experience and quality outcomes. So what I would like to leave you all with is uh, I hope that you have the opportunity to, to actually watch this simulation. Um, and as if you are able to, my wish is also that you all take this nice little melody and it sticks in your head for the next two weeks. So that you're able to gain the full appreciation of what we went through uh, day in and day out. And I, and I hope that uh, we can require Jen and 
uh, John, Wendy, Chris, and Zach to set this as a ringtone for the rest of the semester as well, because we really want it in their head the way it was in ours for weeks. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and thanks for inviting me. That's okay. It's important that they hear it. Isn't that correct? That's exactly right. We would actually count the patients coming to the door, um, find out they ended up in the bottleneck. It happened to be the 13th or 14th patient in the thing, and we would staff so that we could accommodate the person on the billing side. We did not like to hear that, uh, that disgruntled patient leaving. Any other questions for Kevin? Any other questions? Thank you. 
Kevin, did you hear that question? I, I did not hear all of it. I know that he was referring to one of the uh, one of the slides that was an excerpt from our Yammer post. So he was just wondering if there was a correlation between the memos, the reflections that you had to write at the end of the simulation, and the leaderboard. So if you were doing well in the game and you were ranked high in the leaderboard, was there a correlation? Do you think so? In your reflections, did that come out in your reflection papers? Uh, I would, I would think so. I think that would generally be the case. Uh, how your overall experience was would reflect in your uh, in your paper. Um, I think, by and large, though, uh, the experience that I had, as well as the interaction I've had with my cohorts, uh, keep in mind that this game was completed about a week before we all got to meet each other for the very first time. Uh, we had had extensive uh, dialogue over the phone um, or. Uh, through Yammer posts, but we had never physically met each other. And this was a, a point, uh, a talking point when we first got together in some of the dorms, saying that, so how did you make out? What did you think of the game? Uh, what did you What did you like? What didn't you like about it? Um, and overall, the experience seemed to have been very positive. Uh, while, while number two, the uh, student number two said, well, you know, I, I'm still poised for growth. I didn't make I didn't make all of my metrics. She hit uh, 39 of the 40. She wasn't able to hit profitability on Friday. Um, there were about, to the best of my recollection, about six or seven of us that hit all 40 metrics and did quite well with it. So I would imagine our opinion of it is uh, a little bit higher. Um, that would be my guess. Did that answer your question? Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you.